Yeah, so we're here today with Lucien Rocco, and we're here in his car uh, tasting some wines, and we're just going to have a bit of chat about the uh, about this year's vintage. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. just tell us a bit about yourself, uh, your family history, uh, the, yeah. the uh, terroir that you work with. Okay, I'm I'm winemaker since uh, 2009, and I have started my estate uh, the same years. Uh, and my family lives uh, in Burgundy since a long time ago. I'm the 18th generation of winemaker in Burgundy, always in the same place and in the same village, uh, to to Orche. And uh, I'm the first generation have delocalized the, the cellar at two kilometers ago. It's a very long way for the, <laughs> for me. This vintage I have worked with Simon for the in the winery. For the estate, we have uh, today uh, about uh, six hectares, all in organic. Uh, the biggest part is uh, in the Haute Côte de Beaune, in white and red. And we have uh, a little uh, Bourgogne Haligoté and uh, Coteau Bourguignon for the rosé and uh, Saint Romain in white. Okay. What we try. <laughs> cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> In Slim's Okay. It smells a Bunti. Do you know Bunti? No, what's this? It's a cocoa. Okay. It's crazy. <laughs> Nuts, uh, coconuts. Yeah, coconut. Yeah. I don't know if it's always the same, but it's absolutely crazy when <laughs> I feel the. And this is a four year old barrel, so you'd think that the, there would not be much more coconut flavor in there. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but just crazy, but maybe when it's pretty early in the morning when I uh, have full the barrel and just I smell this. So you can see the clarity there, it's still fermenting. There's still yeast floating around in there. There's a little bit of residual sugar there. So for you, the, the main sort of flavors in here? No, on this it's yeah. very complex and very Intense. I, I think it's uh, it's my plot of Haute Côte de Bonne, uh, my favorite plot of Haute Côte de Bonne to Orge, and it's always very rich and very complex. And uh, and this year with the summer we have different type of of uh, flavor in the palate and because and it Clos Tordu is the the plot. Is this the, the no? It's a le clou, le clou. Yeah. No, le clou, le clou. Enfin, uh, it's it's practically the same. The, the clou tordu is on the other cellar, but oh, yeah. it's practically the same type of plot. Okay. This is bone. Always the same color. And uh, I work with the Chassin just for this appellation. Okay. It's uh, before I I I love the the barrel of Chassin for the Haute Côte de Bonne, but the finish it's always more oak. They, they start very slowly okay. on the maturation, and the, when I finish the maturation, the the oak is always so much present for the Haute Côte de Bonne. And it's always very fine and very elegant, but we must do have a big wine for this. Yeah, I, I think this has the most power out of all the barrels we've tried here from 17, 33 reds. Yeah. But no, I probably the 18 go in this. <laughs> yeah, so for me, one of the uh, good things about being here for the vintage is understanding the different terroir and uh, figuring out where, where the different villages are, what their strengths are, and just getting a feel for the area, which you, you can't really do from home um, by looking at a map. You really have to come here and, and visit different people and taste as much as you can to get a good understanding uh, for the region. But uh, in, in the winery, it's also um, it's been a great experience because it's been a hands-on role. 
And because it's a small winery, uh, we get to do everything from out in the vineyard where we're picking into the winery with the fruit receival and uh, juice handling, grape handling, uh, pigeage, remontage, but also getting an understanding to how you see each batch of fruit and with the direction that you want to take it, especially yeah. um, attention to detail with the tannins and the maceration, yeah. understanding when we should pigeage or remontage and just getting the balance right. It was also um, nice that uh, you again you trusted me to, to be in your winery and, and working for you while you could be out managing the vineyard. So that was nice that uh, that you let a stranger walk in and, <laughs> and help out in the winery. So I'm thankful for that as well. Uh, but also your family, it's been great. Um, your your mother's been cooking us lunch every day, <laughs> the big four course long lunches. So that's been um, a big highlight for us as well. So yeah, thank you for that. Okay, it's a pleasure. And yeah. I think the, the, it's very important to understand the, the biggest part of the, of the wine in Burgundy, in all the vineyard in Burgundy especially, is made in the vine. Mm, and right. after, when the grapes arrive in the winery, we, tr we try to make the better, but not so much influence and not so much work, mm -hmm. just have the, the better of the, of the grapes. And uh, it's the idea of the of my estate, and I think on the big, biggest part of Burgundy winemaker. Yeah. And uh, and after the the lifestyle is <laughs> is a cook yeah. is a cooking each yeah. day and uh, and eat each day at at, at home and uh, take a time for for yeah. the lunch and the dinner. It's very important because if uh, if us we don't take time for this. No people drink a wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And the, the other thing I liked is uh, seeing uh, the fruit in the winery. Every batch was treated almost the same. Uh, so more so uh, talking about uh, Pinot Noir. The fruit's coming in and the handling is almost the same on each one. But you can see a distinct difference in every plot. Um, every plot is kept separate in the winery. Yeah. Uh, but they're all very different. Um, some plots could be 200 metres apart yeah. and they're just so different and the only difference is the terroir, it's not what, what's happening in the winery because it's very yeah. similar um, with each batch. In the yeah, winery. in general the, the job uh, in the winery is the same for all the appellation, practically the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the, the, the job change, if the wine change and we won't have the really better of the grapes and just uh, no more plunge and just maybe more remontage if we want not have so much tannin and, not, and the inverse if we want to have more yeah and uh, just the nature addition <laughs> on this part it's haute côte de Beaune. okay and on the on the plain it's a bourgogne okay and in the middle it's a it's a village appellation it's communal okay and we start uh, the côte de Beaune with the marange and finish to La Loi Sereni, and uh, after it's a Côte de Nuit. Okay. And uh, the middle is a Premier Cru, and Grand Cru for the Montrachet and the Corton Charlemagne. So what are the different colours in here? Can you explain? Yeah, uh, all the purple is a Bourgogne, or Haute Côte de Beaune. Okay. All the green is for the Coteau Bourguignon, Aligoté, or Crémant. Okay. And the, the orange or the, or the beige okay. is for the village. The, the yellow, orange yeah. and the crew purple is for the premier cru. Okay. And the yellow and red is for the grand cru. Okay. And so, can you point out where your vineyards are on this map? Yeah, we are. We we live to Saint Romain with my family, uh, Fanny and the three children, just here. And uh, my parents live to Horsch, and the winery is just here and 
holds the biggest part of the estate is here. And uh, the hot coat de bone, are, the plot of hot coat de bone are too harsh for the white and uh, just here for the red in this part and uh, a small part of the white here. Okay. And after we have a uh, haligote in the green just here to Orsh and uh, Saint Romain in the beach just okay. here. After uh, my parents have a different plot and I buy the grapes okay. of my parents. And Saint Romain, Saint Thomas Premier Cru or Remilly is just here in this part. Uh, so that's uh, very close to Montrachet. Yeah, it's about yeah. about uh, four hundred meters. Yeah, but it's not not the same uh, exposition. This is very on the south, and the Montrachet is uh, more south east. Yes. And after uh, I buy a plot of my parents to Volnay just uh, here in the Bourgogne, in the purple. Okay. Here. And uh, to Bone, uh, just uh, just here in the small part here. Yes. Between uh, this way and this way okay. in a range. Yes. It's Bone Le Beaufouget. Very is the smallest plot of the family. Okay, just eight hair are zero rows. zero point zero hectares eight hectares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just five row five rows. Yeah, yeah. and uh, this year it's just four hundred fifty hectoliters uh, liters. liters. Yeah, and uh, after I buy the grapes of. Pomar Petit Noison just here, mm -hmm. and Pomar Les Charmeaux Premier Cru just here, and Pomar Les Combes Dessus just okay. here, just next to Volnay. Yes. So tell us a, you know, a little bit about some of the fruit that we're working with this year for vintage. Okay. Uh, I know. The biggest, we have started the, the harvest this year with uh, Saint Thomas, okay. Premier Cru en Ramilly, the, the 31 of August. And uh, it's generally the first grapes we, we take and we, we pick for the for starting the harvest okay. each each vintage because it's a place uh, uh, very on the south yeah. and uh, always uh, pretty pretty ready for pick and uh, it's pretty good this year and uh, we I am a little bit inky. Do you understand me yet? Yeah. No. Uh, I'm not. I'm not very sure. Yeah. It's okay because I I think the acidity is not very good. But okay, yeah. when we have the finish, the the alcoholic fermentation, all is good and yeah, we have a good balance. And I'm very happy for the for this uh, appellation. And for this, uh, because there's not a lot of acidity this year, you've chosen to go without malolactic fermentation. Yeah. And retain some freshness and acidity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it, it, I think it's okay for the malolactic, yeah. and we can make the malolactic because after it's too much acid, okay. and, and I prefer the the, the good balance. balance. Yeah. And uh, after we are uh, we had uh, pick the grapes of uh, pomar, okay, and uh, we have a pretty good grapes and a lot of quantity and very good quality yeah. on pomar and pomar premier cru les comptes dessus and les charmeaux. The same for bone, and uh, and after the when we have finished the, the Côte de Bone, all the all the appellation of Côte de Bone, uh, we are very happy because we don't think we have so much grapes, and uh, we we wait since a long time ago. Yeah. This this vintage, yeah. uh, and after we have start uh, the the Sunday after the the thirty one. Uh, we have start the the haute Côte de Bone, mm -hmm. and uh, it's the same. It's a very beautiful vintage, and uh, I think the, the balance is very yeah. better yeah. on the haute Côte de Bone because uh, the altitude mm -hmm. is more high, and yes. uh, and the balance is perfect. Yeah, just perfect. Yeah, and uh, it we performed have... really well this year. Because, um, like you're saying, it's a cooler, slightly cooler climate, higher altitude, so it had a bit more time to develop. 
like the yeah. seeds and the skins there was some very good maturity and the ferments they performed as well or um the standard was very close to you know your pomade standard yeah i yeah. i think the i don't know if the the future is the same with uh, the same uh, summer and the uh, so hot mm. but uh, i think it's pretty good for the hot cold and yeah. we have the pretty good terroir for for the future yes. i think yeah for sure because uh, because yeah the it's more cold the night yes and uh, we keep the acidity and with the sun shine mm. and uh, and uh, and the skin is perfect and the color has pretty pretty yeah, good color this year. yeah it's yeah. crazy yeah absolutely crazy so for yeah. me it's very good experience to to work with Simon because it's the first time I have men with me in the winery. This is very different for me. And Simon knows the job. And for me, it's very, very easy after to work. And uh, the language is the language is not very easy for me to, to, to speak English and, uh, and talk for, the, for each day, have a good word for the good job. But uh, when we work with uh, with a man, he knows the job. It's more easy after, yeah. and we we can find the solution for for metal production. But uh, but yeah, it's very pleasant. And Simon uh, have a new idea for, but maybe not a new idea, but a new eyes, yeah. a new vision for me. And uh, it's very interesting to have uh, another think. Mm, yeah, that's right. Maybe a different opinion for some things. Yeah, Maybe exactly. Some different ideas. Yeah, yeah and when we have a this year, we have a, we haven't big problem in the winery, but each time we can ask, um, and and uh, it's always good to to have a two different uh, opinion, and with my uh, my analog, it's three different <laughs> opinion, yeah. and just after make the good choice, yeah. but I think it's very good for the wine to to have a different opinion and and different view yeah, yeah. For, for can be okay and and have the better wine possible so the analog essentially is the consultant who comes around and he provides some advice and also laboratory testing yeah yes exactly yeah but generally i i know what i want and after when the lab uh, arrive, <laughs> it's okay and uh, just it's a confirmation yes, of yeah. what I want. But uh, sometimes yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's nice to have the advice there. If you have a question, you know, you can ask the analog. Yeah, and, you know, to give you some direction. You know, yeah, exactly. Some choices that you need to make. exactly. It's always a confirmation for me, yeah. Yeah. and uh, it's always important. And uh, he have a big view on the on the vintage, and it's always interesting when the the fermentation goes slowly or or stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's always better to know this before on different vin on different estates. He yeah. have see the problem, and yes. it's more easy to to work before have a yeah. big problem. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, and with uh, with your experience, it's. Good, or well, it's always good for me. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> I'm just looking at this. You can see the clarity. You like to have high solids in there. Oh, it's um, not a problem. The clarity is not a problem. Yeah. So, uh, what, what's the reason behind having um, some good solids in there with your fermentation? Oh, because I I like when the, we have a small reduction on the white yes. on the first time, and it's better to keep after. And uh, for, it's better to, to have a long time for keep. <laughs> just a burger. Yeah. And uh, it's not more normal to, to sell more the Fiat Cote de Bon, but we have probably this in first. So, what do we have in this barrel? What? So, the terroir for this uh, barrel? Petit Noison. Okay. So this is pomade? Pomade Petit Noison, yeah. The 
see. And on the new hook. Mm. Well, you know, yeah. At the start, and maybe that's that's the only thing I can think of that you could change it. But in 17, it's a good time. Yeah. Like that, this. This is more of a complexity at the moment. Yeah. That's not a fault. It's, it's no, no, no. Nice when, when it's finished and when they go in the bottle, yeah. it's better to don't have so much reduction. But for the moment, it's good. It's right. More complexity. I see. You hook because it's too much for the for this appellation. Yeah. And we try, we can try this. Uh, yes, it's two times the same. No, no, it's not the same. We we try this two is Saint Roma. Okay. And we have uh, with the uh, front and the back in hook. Okay. And this is the same, but with acacia. Yes. And it's uh, it's uh, the no no shove. It's yeah. uh, in the aqua. Aquaflex. Yeah, it's aquaflex. Okay. And we can, I haven't tried for the moment. Okay. Since I have <laughs> put in the barrel. Yeah. We can try the difference. Normally, no activity in this, it's Saint Aubin. Okay. And all the fermentation is made in tanks this year. Normally, not, but uh, just for be sure to have a good acidity and made a choice if we made the malolactic or no. Okay. It's in the barrel since uh, Monday, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Monday, I think, and uh, and we don't smell it so much as the, the hook for the moment, but it's we can smell it's very the big, biggest mm. appellation with more complexity mm. and more body in the palette. So but I think this, this is dry. It's, it's dry. It's more easy. But it's not very easy after the sugar. Which... And I, I think the acidity on this looks quite good. It's um, nice and fresh. Um, but you just run this through Malo just a little bit just to take the edge off yeah, the acidity but, for balance. But probably the winter arrived before the finish of yeah, the okay. malolactic, and <laughs> it's not bad. For me, the malolactic is not very. Ink yet. Just uh, if the malolactic is not is not finished after one year, I think yeah. it's a problem. Yeah. But, <laughs> but before yeah. it's okay. Yeah, sure. So yeah, guys, if you're um, heading over to Burgundy, um, Lucia is here in Saint Romain. So get in touch, call in. I'm sure we'd love to host you for a tasting. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to to taste my my wine with uh, with different people and. Uh, and talk about the, the vineyard and the Burgundy. And if you want to come, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, that wraps up Burgundy Vintage 2018. Um, if you like these videos, like and subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment at the bottom. Cheers. And maybe just say this wraps up Harvest 2018 in Burgundy. And you gotta say like and subscribe. I'll put some wine in there because I can cheers. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. We can't cheers with no wine. I think we need some more in there, yeah. Oh we can we can, <laughs> we can try some we can try yeah. some tonight. Yeah. Okay, we can do this, yeah.
Do you want to try this? I'm gonna yeah. try it. This is Saint Aubin 15. Oh, yeah. Merci.